Hey guys, it's May May. Look at this stinking cute card. Look how precious this is. I'm in love with this. This is called a mini slimline card and I have a lot of information for you today, so hang on. So recently, one of my design team members, Kim Dixon, I will leave her um, YouTube channel linked in the description below, made a mini slimline card and intrigued me. So I started doing some research. And I've told you before with regular slimline cards, everybody kind of has a different measurement that they use. And the way I chose to do mine was by picking my envelope I wanted to use or the size envelope I wanted to use for my slimlines and making my card base to fit it. So I decided with the mini slimline, I would do the same thing. So here's what I did. I went to the internet or went to Amazon and started looking at envelope sizes. After watching a bunch of mini um, slimline card videos and realized the most standard that I see are these size here. These, they're, it's interesting to me. They're the same size cards, but I mean envelopes, but they're called two different things. This one here in particular is called a number six and three quarter envelope. I'll link these in the description for you guys below. Don't worry about that. So if you're wanting to see what I'm talking about. So this is a six and three quarter envelope. And this one is called a number eight envelope. Now I want to show you the boxes um, because I think, I don't know if it matters, but I want to show you what I'm talking about. By the way, this video is going to be very informative. So stick around. It's not going to be a quick, easy one. we got a lot to talk about. So hang in there with me, okay? So three and five eighths by six and a half is the dimensions of this number six and three quarter envelope. It is a self seal envelope and I thought that might be the one we want. The one I found first and I went ahead and purchased as well, I've demolished the box getting them out, is this one. This one is called a number eight envelope and the dimensions are the same, three and five eighths by six and a half. Notice that, dimensions are the same. So what I decided to do was pick up both of these so I could see which one I like best and kind of help you guys decide and show you the differences. So in the number eight envelope, and I don't know if this is why it's a number eight and not a number six, but this one is a security envelope. And I chose this one in particular because it had black inside and I didn't mind the black patterning. And um, I, I also like that this envelope gave me a traditional envelope look in case that's what I was looking for, okay? A lot of times if you want to, I'm a person who writes my return address on the back. So sometimes I like to have this space. If I wanna add a sticker, I kinda like to have this point. So that's one reason I like these. Now for these guys, I really like them because they seemed a little fancier. Number one, they're self-seal, which I like. And they also just are a little cleaner and a little fancier. But if you'll stick around to the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how to make an envelope for a mini slimline without having to purchase envelopes at all. Because I feel like this card would be so easy for that to kind of make your own one-off envelopes. And I also feel like this is not gonna be a size card you use in your, in your collection all the time. I don't know, I think I could fall in love with them and make them all the time. But I think if you were just gonna make this size card, you could make a one-off envelope pretty easy. Okay, also, I need to tell you this. Let's talk flash giveaway. So when I was picking out my envelopes, I found the envelopes and I placed my order. What I didn't realize is that I was placing a bulk order. <laughs> so I ordered six packs of these envelopes, the number six self seal. So here's what I thought I would do. In the description of this video, there'll be a giveaway. If you'd like to win a box of 100 envelopes, one of these, you can enter that giveaway. Super easy, just a raffle copter giveaway. And I'll give the, um, we'll leave that open for a week. And if you wanna enter it, then we'll give them away next week. So, okay, let's talk card bases. So I have two different card bases here. We can make a slimline envelope because like I told you, there are so many different, ideas out there right now. So many different things are floating around. Here's what I did. This one is six and a quarter by six and a half. And this one is six by six. Okay. I'm pretty sure Kim made a six by six. And I also did the six and a quarter by six and a half. Why? This one fits my envelope better. So if I'm going to make one in particular for my mini envelope, this is the one I want. My six, my six by six will have a little more space. I actually want to show you the space. So let's take the six by six base first and we'll score it and fold it. So this one's easy. We're going to score it at three. The reason I love the six by six size is because we like our six by six pads, right? We like to use our six by six paper pads. And so this is a great way to use that up. Okay. So there is my six by six folded in half. And then this one is my six and a quarter by six and a, and a half piece. Okay, so I'm just gonna use my trimmer to score this. I don't have a 
scoreboard handy for some reason. I don't know where it's at, but I'm gonna use my trimmer. So here's the deal. I'm gonna put this in my trimmer on the six and a half side, and I'm going to score it at, six, at three and a quarter. All right, so I'm gonna place this into three and a quarter, and I'm gonna use my score blade. Let's get my cut blade out of the way. Use my score blade and score that. Okay, so this then becomes, and oh, let me show you something. On this trimmer, which I really like, it has this little lip right here, so if I want to get that good fold like I do with my scoreboard, I can do that right there. So this then becomes the size I prefer, okay? The six by six paper, you can see here, I scored it at three inches and folded it in half, is another option, all right? And I'm pretty sure this is the size Kim used. I think she did. All right, so let's, let me show you those in the envelope real quick. We are gonna make a card, but I think you need to know all this information. So this is that number six envelope. They're the same dimension. And this is the size I would prefer to use as my card base, and I'll show you why. I don't like when a card has too much space in an envelope. That's just me and my preference. You can do what you want, but I have a thing about wanting my cards to just fit in the envelope, and this one just does, okay? Now, if you wanted to use the six by six size, which is great for paper saving, let me show you what it looks like. This envelope is the same dimensions, okay? And you can see you have a little more room in there. It's it may not be enough to make a difference, and if you're a person that does dimension on your card, then this size is probably perfect for you, the six by six. Now, the reason a six by six base is the better option for size is because you can get four bases out of a 12 by 12. You can get one base out of one piece of six by six from a, um, from a paper pack. It's very, very versatile, and it's also easy to remember. Six by six, score at three. Where this one, you have to remember six and a quarter by six and a half, score at three and a quarter, so it's a little little more fiddly, but you do you, okay? And this will fit in either envelope. I'll show you, this will fit in here as well, and it fits fine, um, but you can see the difference in the size here. See how much more space we take up in the envelope? That may be splitting hairs for some of you, and I totally get it, because I, I tend to be a person that splits hairs. And I know you're gonna ask, how do these mail? Do they mail the same as an A2? Do they cost more, et cetera? I contacted my local post office. I told them my dimensions of the card, told them it was a greeting card, and I asked them if there would be an additional charge for the size of this envelope. And they told me it fits in their regular measurement for envelope. So that means there's not a charge because of the size of the envelope itself. Now, if you do a thicker card or if it's heavy, that could change things. But this envelope in particular does not have a surcharge. And I say that because, you know, square envelopes typically have a surcharge. And so I wanted to make sure this small one didn't. And they assured me that it didn't. So they are mailable. So here's what we need to do. We need to make one. Let's make it with this one. I like the big guy. Okay, you guys. So I have been dying to use these stickers that we got in the store that I just fell in love with. So I've cut some mats for myself already. So this mat, because this card is three and three fourths tall by six and a quarter wide, this mat becomes three by six. And that gets me an eighth of an inch all the way around. This second mat becomes two and three quarters by five and three quarters and gets me another, I just wanted that little color around the edge and that's perfect. I will make you a printable that you can print out that will have the dimensions for this card so you can see the little mat sizes. I think that'll help. So I'll put that in the description. Okay, let's make this. This little guy's gonna be my base and I think what I wanna do is pop this one up and I might even, look how cute this paper is. Oh my goodness. I might even do some fancy corner punching. I've been doing this lately. Let's do the scallop on the corner. I think it'll be cute and it'll show off more of that stripe underneath. So I love the scallop punch. Look what it's gonna do. You remember how I showed you before using the scallop punch on your slim lines makes it look like you had a die, especially for the card. But look, this will show off some more of the color underneath. Isn't that cute? So let's get this one ready to pop up. You can see one of the reasons that I'm gonna love this card already. Do you see how little foam tape, and I didn't go chintzy on it. That's all the foam tape I need, and that's a lot. That's probably more than I would normally use because, you know, I can be kind of cheap where that's concerned. And then I'm going to line this up. You, This will make, these size cards will make your um, product go so far, you know. It just will stretch it. So this is going to get glued straight down. The other thing I really love about this size card is all your stamp sets now become big. You know how sometimes you want to get those larger six by eight stamp sets so you can get some bigger images? With this size card, all of your images have now 
like doubled in size. That'll make sense when you start designing cards in this size. Um, all your wording gets bigger, everything, because you're putting it on a smaller spot. It's pretty cool, y'all. I'll increase that down again just a little bit because it's wanting to pop. Okay, there's that. Let's do the stickers. So on this sheet, I thought these stickers were so cute. I thought I'd use one of these to kind of mimic like a table or something for it to sit on. I don't think I want to use the stripe, but maybe this yellow, I think this is really cute. So let's peel this little sticker off of here. And then what I'm going to do is just run it kind of low on the page. Just run it straight across as straight as I can. Let me look and see if I'm about right. That feels about right. You guys will know better than me because your head is over the camera. Mine isn't. I'll trim that off. Look how cute. And I'll put this one back because I can use it later. And is your, is your head already spinning for ideas with this size card? And like I said, I thought I was in front of the trend, but I'm not. This has been around for at least six months because I found some videos that had been around that long. Okay, so I'm going to put milk here, you guys. Oh, it's so cute. I know I said that was going to be a table, but now it's not working because I scooted it down, but it's still super cute. Then I'm going to put a cookie. Do I want to use both cookies? Do I want to use just one cookie and maybe the one that's got the bite out of it? Just kind of place him, maybe place him up like that. Because I'm not done. I've got more from the sticker sheet I want to add. I'll show you. So I want to use this sticker that says, So Happy Together. And I'll put it right here. So cute. And then I've got something else I want to use. So the sticker sheet has these little caption bubbles that say things. I want to use this one that says, You Warm My Heart. And I want to put it here, but I want to pop it up too. So let's put some foam on the back of that. So I got some foam on it, and I think I'm just going to put it at an angle as if the milk were talking to the cookie. Like that, you guys. Come on, look how cute this is. Now, let's stamp the inside. Now, I have to be super honest with you and tell you that I'm cheating a little bit, but not by much, okay? This video is going up at 1 o'clock on, on Saturday, and the reveal video for our new stamp set for the month is going up at 3. And this happens to be a sentiment from that set, and it's perfect for this card, and I just had to use it, and I know you will forgive me for giving you a little sneak peek. So, I'm going to use the word sensational, and see how big this now becomes in this tiny this mini slim line, see how big it makes our images. And I'm going to use a sentiment above it that says, I think you are. So this is going to go here. I cannot get my head over, so I'm hoping that's right. It might be crooked. It's all right. It works. So I think you are sensational inside of my card. And make sure I don't have ink on my fingers. Let's close this up. And just look how cute that is and how simple that comes together. Now let me show you how I would make an envelope for it if I didn't have an envelope already. So for my envelope, I'm using a piece of copy paper. Now you have to be careful because it's copy paper, it's very thin. You could certainly do this with light cardstock, you could do it with vellum, any of that, but anything you use different could cost you a little more when you ship it. So just remember there when you mail it. So okay. with your paper in your scoreboard on the seven and a half inch side, you're gonna score your first score at two and one eighth. I know we don't like eights, but it does work in this one. So two and one eighth, and then you're gonna score it at five and a half. So I'm being very gentle, very gentle. I'm mostly just getting myself my lines just so I can see where to fold. Let me do this one again because I feel like it kind of went away. All right, then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to score at one and a half. And at the very bottom, we're going to score it at seven and three quarters because I want a three-fourths inch piece to flap up. All right, now we got to get rid of some pieces. So let me move this out of the way. Now, when you score this, and you probably cannot see my score lines, but trust me on this, you have a square here, a square here, a little square here, and a little square here. We're going to cut those away. So, I'm just going to take my scissors, and down here at the bottom, I'm going to slice into this one. I will lay this down when I'm done so you can see what I've done. I'm going to slice up on this one. So, there's my first little square away, and now let's take this one away. And I am cutting away the score mark. I don't need the score mark, so I'm cutting it away. Technically, you probably could just trace this, you know, just make yourself a template and then trace on and fold. And then up here in the top corner, we want to take these little rectangles away. We're making a policy envelope. They're not diff Policy envelopes to me are the easiest to make um, because you don't have to do angles. Okay, so let me lay this down. So there's what we're looking for, okay? And what you're going to do is fold your lines. So I'm going to come right here and just fold this one up. 
If you're a little generous on the sides, that's good. Your card will just slide in easier and out easier. So don't stress too much about that. Like there, I went a little generous, especially down there. I may be too generous at the bottom, let's see. There we go. All right, at this, at this part here, you can fold this over like so. Um, and you can just leave it straight, or you could cut a little angle here to give it a little interest. I'm just gonna leave it straight. It seems to fit really good, and it'll be fine there. Same at the top. If you wanna angle cut this, and another thing you can do at the top of this is corner around it. You could do it at the bottom as well. Both of them would work. But you could corner around this. I feel like that's quite open. And this would even make it look a little more store-bought. So there, and then on the bottom, I might do the, the little quarter-inch corner rounder. Just a little tiny one. I did not get that in there good. We'll take it. All right, so now we're going to glue it. I would probably just use sticky tape here because I'm using copy paper and it will show through. So what I'm going to do, and I probably wouldn't use this thick of one. Let me see if this will over, overlap this much. It does. I wouldn't use this thick of one. I'd use a thinner strip, but just for purposes here. And I would run this all the way up and down. I wanna show you something too. I was on a Zoom call yesterday with a subscriber and we were talking about um, the tape and how to cut it. And I was like, why did I not think about this? Look, if you don't have one of those acrylic blocks, just lay your ruler down and that works perfect. Everybody's got a ruler or most everybody does. All right, so let's reveal our adhesive. Stick that down better, there we go. Then let's Turn this over. Yeah, that works well. I would just prefer, I just think that works better with the sticky tape versus glue because glue on the copy paper is going to show through real bad. I will tell you though, some, you may have like a dot adhesive or something like that that would work good with copy paper. I'm not big on dot adhesive. I don't use it much, but if you have that, that'll work too. And then guess what? Right up here, go ahead and put some sticky tape down. Just don't reveal it yet. And once you put your card in, you can reveal it and then stick it down. All right, let's pull that away. Close the bottom up. Isn't that cute? I think these are super cute. Decorate them, stamp them, whatever. And then your, uh, your card just slides inside. And I gave you a, enough room in here with those measurements to be able to kind of give yourself a little space. And then this folds over and look, there's your envelope. I might, I made this card a little thick, so I might should have extended out just a little bit, but it'll still work and I still would use this envelope. But think about that. If you're gonna make thick cards, you might wanna give yourself a little more room this way because it kind of fills up at the bottom, if that makes sense. Because that goes all the way in, but it still closes over just fine. All right, so that is my take on the mini slimline. I'm gonna, I'm telling y'all something right now. These are fun. I don't know what's so different. I don't know if it's just because I've made A2s for so long and five by sevens and even the big slim lines, but when it makes your images just take up so much more real estate, I mean, imagine how much smaller this would be on an A2 card. You know what I'm saying? And I just think this is precious. Even my sentiment takes up so much more space. I love it. It keeps me from having to buy those bigger stamp sets, you know, to be able to get bigger images. I love it. So I'm grateful to Kim for making her first video because I had never seen one until Kim did it. And I'm grateful to all the other folks out there that have made many slimline cards. Go do a search. You'll be surprised how many people are already making them and how popular they've gotten. Tell me in the comments. Be honest. It's okay. I can handle it. <laughs> Tell me in the comments. Do you think you could see yourself making many slimlines? I really think I can. I love them. All right, guys, when you do make one, and I hope that you will. Share it with me on my customer gallery at maymaymadeit.com. I cannot wait to see what you're making. And come over to our Discord and give us a chat over there. We love chatting with you guys and uh, knowing what you're making and things like that. So all that information is in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoyed Mini Slimline, like this video. Thanks so much, guys. Till next time. Bye now.